All right, welcome back to the Garmin Gravel School, where we catch up with some of our favorite gravel athletes as we head towards Unbound. I'm your host, Kristen Legan, and today I'm here with one of my personal favorites, not bias or anything, um, but also one of the easiest athletes to spot out in the uh, on the course just because of her vibrant orange kit. Uh, welcome, Is King. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, Iz, you've been racing gravel for a few years now. Uh, you're still fairly new to the scene. Um, can you tell us a little bit about just how you've gotten into gravel and why you think you've maybe excelled so much in the the super endurance kind of side of things like Unbound and, and 200 miles with that? Yeah, uh, it's funny to think back. Unbound was actually my first gravel race. It would be, be two years uh, ago, you know, in a month. Um so I do feel relatively new, but then also like two years of experience under my belt. So not as new as I once was, but still uh, do feel like a newcomer. I think Unbound is, has like a special place in my heart just because when I was looking at maybe getting into gravel and training in the pandemic, like those big adventure rides were really kind of like where I found the most joy. Um the training side of it, the kind of like trying to prepare for something as crazy as a 200 mile race. Um, I really, really like, um, so this year it is interesting. Once you add like a full race calendar, you don't have as much time to like focus and just do like those crazy big rides to get ready. So it's kind of a balance of like, how do you be ready for the shorter mountain bike races and things like that while also building an engine, um, for the longer end stuff. Um, but I do a big focus for me is, is the beginning. Now these races start so fast that even though you're racing 200 miles, like the first hour and a half is where you win or lose the race. Um, mm -hmm. so it's been really interesting transitioning from, I'm like a pretty diesel engine. I love going for a long, long time. And the end of the race is usually pretty good for me, but if I'm too far back from the winner, you're not going to close gaps. Uh, so it's an interesting kind of shift the focus for me. Once you have kind of like the, the, knowledge that you can do that distance it's then you shift your focus of how do I go the fastest I possibly can over a crazy distance yeah well speaking of like the long season and everything going on with that you did the Grand Prix last year um was definitely a long season um <laughs> from start to end but what you know across all of those different races you know what did you learn from those experiences and are you changing anything up this year you know you're back in the Grand Prix again so are you changing changing things up for the season yeah, it's interesting. Last year was my first full race season. It was the first time racing for eight, nine months straight. Um, I definitely learned a lot of lessons. Uh, I learned that you can't be fast for the entire year. My goal last year was kind of to try and like be fast. You were like, okay, you can kind of like peak for every month. Um, that was the goal. That was not something that I could do. Um, I'm also learning that you have to say no to more things outside of bike racing um to be a really good bike racer like you have to skip some birthdays you have to skip some weddings and I think for me last year I tried to balance being a regular 32 year old and being a pro bike racer and that uh there's a reason that people don't do that super well <laughs> um it's so like I learned that lesson the hard way and I was pretty burned out come August and you look at August and you're like I still have quite a few months until you know October hit comes around so uh that was an interesting lesson. Um, so this year trying to balance it better, say no to things, even when you don't want to miss it. Um, and try and kind of like actually have peaks and valleys within the season. Um, that said, I'm doing the same thing as everyone else is doing. You peak for Unbound, you peak for Leadville, whereas like logically I'm like, man, I should really like peak for Crusher and the Tusher and the Rad, <laughs> but, uh, we'll figure out <laughs> how it goes. Yeah, well, speaking of the rad, I mean, that's obviously going to be a new race for the, the Grand Prix. Are you doing any other new races? Or are you trying to keep it pretty focused this year? I think it's an interesting challenge, again, with say to no, saying no to things. The Grand Prix is so long and the events are so challenging that it's hard to add in more. Um, I'm doing so the rad will be new. Gravel Worlds will be new as well. Um, so I'm super excited about that one. I've heard really good things. Um and then I'll do Steamboat again, just because that's a, a really fun event and uh, I think really good vibes as well. Nice. Good. Nice to get out and spread it out a little bit out there. Yeah. So. Nice. Well, speaking of different racing and, and different courses, um, here today, chat a little bit about navigation and just how 
or, you know, you set your computer up differently versus a race or mm-hmm. a ride. Yes, our little garment oh, here. Sorry, <laughs> um, but I guess the, to start, you know, what are you planning to use at Unbound? Which which garment are you planning to use? So I will probably use, this is my new Edge 840, the solar power one, um, which is amazing. I just threw it outside yesterday, charged it up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do generally you live in LA. I've been using it since I got it at Sea Otter and I've charged it once like two wow. and a half weeks ago now, which is pretty insane. Um, but I, I like this, um, new 840. I raced with the 830 last year. I really like it. Um, it's smaller than the, the 1040, which is also one of the ones I like to train with. Um, but I think with the Garmin always like your, these races are so long. You want to be able to track everything, navigate, and not be stressed that you're going to run out of batteries. Um, right. Even if Unbound takes me 12 hours, I will probably have, you know, 85% battery left, which is always pretty stunning. Um, yeah. So I'm excited. I'll race with the, uh, with the new edge uh, 840. Nice. Yeah. Um, so when you're out there, do you, between training and, and racing, do you set your computers up differently? Are you looking at different numbers or, you know, obviously you're looking at navigation during the race, but do you have different like profiles for racing or, or riding? I think it's interesting. I think the biggest difference between racing and riding or uh, and training is looking at the numbers. So in a race, like there is a number that you have to do to stay with people. And I've found like, if you look at the power numbers or your heart rate, it's only going to scare you. It's either going to say that feels really, really hard and the number is really low or this number is way too high and I can't hold this. So I found that it is actually not helpful. <laughs> on yeah. a race. I keep it on the map screen. I don't want to miss any turns. These races are long enough. Like I would rather not have a certainty. Like you don't want to turn to sneak up on you and you like maybe you crash or someone else isn't ready for it. Like I you know, look at the riders around me and the map below me. And that's kind of it. Um, occasionally I'll look and be like, okay, where am I mileage? Like to make sure timing and stuff that I'm, I'm up on fueling, but also when the race is 200 miles, like it's going to be a long day. You don't really want to be like, Oh my God, I've only done 80. Like (laughs) numbers like not really helping. You're never going to be like, wow, I can't believe it's already been 150 miles. That just flew by. Like that's never happened to me. Um, And then in training, like the numbers are important because you want to kind of be like trying to hit zones and you're training different um, kind of like within all of your different power zones. Each workout has a specific um, purpose. Uh, So with that, the power meter and the heart rate and things like that actually do matter. Um, So I think with also like the ability to set up all the screens, I'm tracking power, I'm tracking heart rate all through these races, but I'm just not looking at it. I could, if I needed to, you just like, flip over to it. Um, but I think with that, it's really nice to have everything set up in terms of like what I would want to look at and what I don't want to look at, but like, you can just kind of choose in that moment, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I always find that athletes typically fall into two categories. Either they love to have all the numbers up and checking, you know, what their power and their speed and all this is, or it's just like nothing at all. Just focus on the map and and do that. And I definitely fall on your side of things where I just want to be like looking at the map all the time and making sure I'm going in the right direction. But the new garments have the ability. You can put some of the data on the map screen so you can like, and so I'm like, Oh, how much do I, you know, figuring out what, um, if How much any. do I want to know? Totally. Yeah, exactly. And I do, so I use Climb Pro a lot also, especially when a course is new, things like that. Um, and I've debated with my friends as to like whether it's helpful or not to know how long a climb is or how purple the grade is going to get and things like yeah. that. But I do tend to like, like if you know it's going to be steep for just a little bit longer than you get a recovery, like you can kind of like balance with that. So I do use Climb Pro. Um, I don't use it when I'm training in the mountains that I know. Um But when I'm going on a new route or something like that, I'll always use it. Um, So that's another one, um, which is nice. And it's funny, um, compared to like the mountainside train in here, you're like, this will be 300 feet and it'll be climb, (laughs) you know, one of 750 climbs you'll do today. And you're like, oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah. A little bit different than your mountains. Long, steady climbing. Totally. (laughs) Um, well, the other thing I was going to ask about is it's so easy now to switch, uh, data, uh, cells on the Garmin. Do you ever do that mid race? If you're just like, Oh, I want to look at some random number. Or are you pretty focused on just the numbers you have? I've never done it mid race. I did mm-hmm. it mid ride 
yesterday. Um, I had been doing like my main things that I look at when I'm training are heart rate power. And then like speed is normally the one that I keep as a third, just because I find if you're descending, like it's better to kind of know going into a turn, like you can glance and be like, Ooh, that's too fast. Um, but I was doing a cadence workout earlier this week and I had switched to cadence. And then on our ride, like we were, we were ripping around in the mountains and I just got like, Oh, boop, 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 like <laughs> switch it back to speed. Um, which is really nice. Like I think the ability to do it on a fly is crazy. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's nice to be able to just get what you need when you need it. So, um, well, as we head towards Unbound, you know, what are you look, most looking forward to heading back to Emporia and the, the big gravel party that is out there each year? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I think that's a good way to put it. The people and the environment is always, it's kind of my favorite part. You walk around the expo or, uh, I'm actually, I can plug it quickly. I'm doing a, I'm leading a ride um, on Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, so I'm excited about that. I think like it'll be a combination of Lifetime Grand Prix, Girls Gone Gravel, Pan Racer, me, just like hopefully I get a lot of people out there um, to ride with. So I think with that, it kind of, it's meeting everyone. It's, it's hearing everyone's stories, what their prep was. And I think the beauty of these races is like, we will all line up on the start line on Saturday and nobody knows what's going to happen. And I think that's really cool. So I really enjoy the days before where everyone is nervous and excited and and there's no more work left to be done. Like you just kind of have to trust that what you've done is, is enough. Um, Or if it's not enough, like good luck. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so I think that's my favorite part, like talking, talking to people. And uh, it's also something that I have to control. Like I, really really enjoy the social element of these races and to be a really good racer you should be in your airbnb like with your feet up and i'm like let me go hang out in the sun and talk to people uh so again it's finding that balance um but for me that's a really important part of it because like a lot of us pros don't have a job if you know the four thousand people don't you know other people that are doing this race don't show up like there's no value in what we're doing. Um, so I think it really is about the community and about everyone that's doing this race, not about just like the pros racing at the pointy end. For sure. Well, and it's just such a fun, you know, experience out there. So good to right. like, hear two from years everybody. Ago, my first time and I was walking around being like, I have no idea what happens. And so like to talk to people that are like, this is my first time. You're like, let's go. Like, I'm so yeah. excited. <laughs> nice. Good, good. Well, thank you so much for sharing a little bit about yourself and your training and prep for Unbound. I know we're all looking forward to seeing you out in Emporia soon. Um, But yeah, thanks for, for joining us here today. Yeah, thank you for having me.